Hello and a very warm welcome back to another video. Today I will show you how to import data from CSV files into R. Uh, if you have not done so already, please subscribe and let's get started. I'll be importing a data file called MBA, uh, like in my other videos about importing uh, data into R. And I will post the Google Drive link to this spreadsheet. I've also opened it, opened it up right here uh, in the top of the description so you can follow these steps that I'm doing in this video if you want. Uh, make sure to save this file or to download this file as a CSV file, so a comma separ separated values file, like here, right here. So if once we've downloaded the data, we turn to the question of how to actually import this data into R. So in R there are multiple functions to do this. For a quick overview, overview you can uh, type here in RStudio the question mark sign and then uh, read.csv and this will open up this help pane on the right hand side here. Here you see uh, five functions yeah? starting here with the read table function uh, to read CSV, read CSV2, read DLIM and read DLIM2 and all of these are basically equivalent uh, except for the default of some of the arguments. So the most important difference is the default argument for the arguments header and sep. So header is, you can see right here, with the first function read table and sep here. Uh, if header is true, then the first row of your data will be treated as uh, column names. And the argument sep indicates uh, the character uh, by which the values of your data are separated on each line. So most commonly they are either a comma, like here in the read CSV function, or a semicolon like in the read CSV2 function. And uh, these two functions uh, we will look more closely at in just a moment. If you're wondering which character separates the values in your data, uh, you can just go here to your Windows Explorer or your Finder app, and then uh, you right click on the data. So we had this MBA sheet one download earlier and then go to open with and then you go here to notepad or any other text editor uh, if you have a Mac then you probably just use text edit and then we open up uh, our data and we see yeah all the values here are separated by a comma so this means that we have to set the argument sep in one of these functions that are list that is listed here to uh, a comma and we see also that this read CSV function right here already has by default this sep function to a comma. So uh, we will use this now uh, to down to import our data into R. So if we want to assign uh, our data to a variable called data in R, then we just type data, an arrow, and then the read.csv function, then the name of the CSV file, so in our case after our download from the Google spreadsheet it was called mba-sheet1.csv and here this extension .csv must not be omitted. Now if we run this line of code then our data is imported. If this should produce an error in your RStudio then this probably means that you have to change your working directory. Uh, to find out how to fix this error I also made a video this is now displayed in the top right corner, just check it out, fix the error and then just come back. And uh, with the head.data function uh, we can also look at the first six arguments or six rows of the data. And we see here also that the first row of our data was automatically taken as the column names. And that is because the read.csv function here has the argument header set to true by default. Uh, so the first row of your data is taken as your column names. Now you might ask yourself, uh, what do I do if not a comma is separating the values in my data, but for example a semicolon. So as it happens, I also created uh, this data with a semicolon separating the values. So I will open up this real quick to show you. Uh, I called this MBA sheet underscore semi and here you can see that instead of the commas there are semicolons. It really doesn't matter uh, it could be also a colon or uh, just a space separating the values but uh, here if you have this you can set this sep argument to the desired character you want so for example here uh, I 
assigned this sepcar argument with a semicolon and then uh, this will work just as above. Um, for comparison, if we don't change this to a semicolon, if the semicolon actually separates the values, so if we just leave this here with a comma, then you see that the data here is not imported correctly. So we have to keep the semicolon here, or actually change this to a semicolon. Alternatively, you can also use this CSV2 function. So read.csv2. Because in this function, the default argument for sep is actually a semicolon. So as you can see right here in the help pane again, you see that here sep, the default is a semicolon. So here we don't need to adjust it, we can just run it. And we see it works just as above. Another noteworthy thing uh, is uh, the header argument. I already mentioned this before. Uh, this will not treat your first row in your data as column names. Uh, but rather as the first actual row of your data and uh, for illustration purposes I will run this real quick and just note that the read table function here for example has header equals false as their default. Okay and the last thing I want to mention is the choose.files. I also already mentioned this in the uh, video I did about loading Excel files into R. Instead of typing here the name of the of the file, you can just type choose.files and if you run this then a window will pop up and you can actually manually choose your data from your Windows Explorer or your Finder app. And yeah, we can open for example here the MBA sheet 1 as we did before and this will load and the head function also works just as above. Uh, this is useful if you just want to look at the data real quick and don't want to change your working directory. However, for reproducibility, this is of course not so useful because you have to choose the file every time you run the code. Yeah, this sums up this video. It would mean a lot to me if you would leave a like and a subscription. This will also keep me motivated to create future videos as I then know that there is an audience interested in these kinds of videos. Please also comment with feedback and recommendations for future videos. Other than that, I hope this video was helpful. See you soon and take care.